There is no way that a house with a significant hole in the wall would be more efficient than one without one. And the claim is misleading and false. I don't think I've written anything about this, but I have in podcasts talked about a story that I heard from Ernie and Erica and Ianto and Kiko, and I think Max might have been there. And um, the story goes like this, that apparently there was a mass heater of some kind, a uh, masonry heater possibly, and it was in Sweden, and it's something like 30 below outside. And there's a gap like this big all around the edge of the roof going to the outside so where you're sitting is it's exposed um, to the great outdoor air and the wind is moving through this this structure but they're sitting on a mass and they feel it feels like the air is 70 degrees and they're not wearing coats or anything like that but the air temperature is probably very very cold but everybody feels Comfortable. Well, we've already addressed that question. You're, not, you're heating the people, not the house. One, you're using conduction and, and, and radiation instead of convection. Two, it doesn't matter what the temperature of the air is. If the thing you're sitting on is warmer than you are, you're going to be toasty. So I didn't try to say that it's more efficient. I am trying to say that it's a different style of heat and that this is what happens. Now, on top of that, in order to talk about the value of a rocket mass heater, once I bought this land, we had the one test that we had to do immediately because it's so difficult for people to understand the value of a rocket mass heater. So, within three months, we had a teepee set up and Ernie and Erica uh, built a rocket mass heater in that teepee. We had a couple lined up. They moved in. A teepee. This is not an insulated structure. Without a second in inner liner, without the inner cover, like if this is just a single skin crap teepee. I think they started to put up some inner liner stuff, but still, even with an inner liner, this is not an insulated structure. Yeah, no, I saw your teepee. The teepee yeah. itself is not particularly impressive. And they've got, <laughs> and all, all along the bottom, there's a good three to four inch gap all the way around the bottom of the teepee. And then of course, this great big open space at the tippy top. So, um, there's a rocket mass heater in there. And then the, the test was, and we happened to have a, we were very fortunate to have an excellent test the very first winter. And unbeknownst to the couple staying inside, so their fire went out at about 9 p.m. And they woke up in the morning and they did not know that it was 26 below outside. So they got up, they got out of bed, they took off their night clothes and they put on their day clothes and it wasn't until they got outside that they realized how bitter cold it was. And so then here's the grand moment. The reason why we put up the teepee, the reason why we built the rocket mass heater, and that is, okay, when you're getting dressed, how warm did it feel inside there? Did it feel like 26 below? Did it feel like 32 degrees? What did it feel like? It felt like 50 or 55 in there. Fire's been out more than eight hours. It felt like 55. That was the big test. So she's saying something about having a big hole in the wall. And having a big hole in the wall is part of what we're trying to demonstrate. You can have magnificent, comfortable heat and have a big hole in the wall. Of course, if it's an insulated structure, you could burn less wood. But we're already burning extremely little wood. I mean, even if that fire was going 24-7, the firebox is really tiny. You're not getting a lot of wood in there. And you're not burning it 24-7. They're burning it about three hours each night. She might have a point. She might have a point. Uh, when you say heat is distributed by air only. There's also then with a big hole in the wall, you are toast. Yeah. If you're looking at air heated structures, that's a big problem. Low if mass. you're looking at Perfect. moisture movement in the building, you could argue for both. Um, a hole, Any hole or crack in the wall will allow warm air from inside to go out. If it contacts a cold outer wall, you've got condensation. Holes in the walls can be big problems. I don't mm. think anyone would disagree. Yeah, disagree. Um, there's another story you told about 
airtight houses becoming so airtight that they had ventilation problems and then they were required to be super efficient and required to have a hole in the wall that was screened yeah to let air in and out again mm -hmm. and it's like yeah if you're building a shelter for people and you manage to seal it as tight as a ziploc bag so no air gets in or out your thermal efficiency may be great but you're not it's not efficient as a shelter for people because they all ran out of air and died um, so you need a certain amount of airflow through the building, and when you're heating the air as, and you're using that really poor heat sink, it, like air makes a much better insulator than it does a heat conductor. That's right. what insulation is. To Most insulation. insulation is isolated made of air, air pockets, isolated yeah. by whatever the heck they can figure out to make into fluff or foam or whatever to isolate that air. Um, but yeah, so air is not a great heat transfer material. And then when you factor in the fact that, that you need ventilation not just to breathe, but you need ventilation to keep your walls from molding and mildewing, and you need ventilation um, to keep the structure functioning. Um, yeah, moving, moving air through a building is a much more efficient way to cool the building than to heat it. And you have to move a certain amount of air because it's the nature of the building and the people in it. You have to, to replace air. all the air in the building like twice an hour minimum or something like that, right? Three, I, three yeah. times an hour? Okay, three times an hour minimum you have to replace all the air in the room, in the building. It might be, it might be in all of it. So if the building hours. weighs more and the part that weighs a lot is the part that you're heating, then that building with the big hole in the wall is actually going to be more comfortable than a uh, than a than a uh, meaning not going like this in its temperatures than a well enclosed building of a low mass where all of the heat in the building stratifies to the top and you have cold feet hot air all of the heat yeah is hot no, air no, no, if if no. most of the mass of the building so my metal trailer that I live in that has some insulation in the walls mm. um, and is heated by blowing air around yeah. the and and that blower turns on and turns off based on a thermostat that's right here okay, okay. then my feet are going to get cold and it's still going to say it's 70 degrees mm. and then and it's going to go below 70 degrees and it's going to turn back on and blow some more around, and it's going to feel really hot up here, and still stay at 70 degrees, and I'm going to be uncomfortable in both of those extremes, and I'm going to use a lot of energy, because every place that it's sucking air from is bringing cold air in through cracks, and every place that it's blowing the air to is blowing air, hot air that I've just paid to heat out those cracks, and every time the door opens, a significant portion of the hot mass in the building has just left. And so so that is going to reduce the comfort of the building drastically, even if I've got a very efficient heater. And if my but if my heat my if my very efficient heater is heating something ephemeral like hot air, like air, that can go away really quickly, um, then even if it, you have to close it in very, very tightly to have it be comfortable and uh, and efficient. If it's heating something that doesn't give up its heat easily that I can go and make it give it up to by being on it, I'm going to be very comfortable even with a big hole in the wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I taught at Cobb Cottage Company for a number of years, Yonto's place. And um, one of the nights during the the workshop, you know, these are like three week long workshops. I designed a thousand dollar house course over there. Uh, we would all get together in the um, the Myrtle, which is sort of their their library space, and they have this great big rocket mass heated bench that goes around the Myrtle. We get that thing going really well. It'd be a cold night, and everybody be sitting around in their t shirts with their shoes off, enjoying this rocket mass heater bench. And so I'm describing what thermal mass does. And I would, there's two doors sort of opposite each other in the building. And I'd tell somebody that, okay, let's check this out. Everybody, go. let's open those doors. Open the doors and windows and let's let all the, cold, the hot air out. Um, and there you'd hear this, like, oh, no, don't do that. It's warm in here. 
just, 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 you know, keep your shirt on. So we'd open the windows and doors and let the breeze blow through. And everybody sitting on the, the mass benches, you just give them a little while and don't say anything. And you notice after a while they start looking at each other like, okay, I can feel the air is actually chilly, but I'm warm. But more importantly than I'd say, okay, everybody feels the air is not quite chilly. You know, it's 50 degrees in the air, right? And you're still in your t-shirt. I didn't see anybody grab for your jacket. All right, close the doors. The doors are closed now. And the, and the space, not the air, because the air is still 50 degrees, but because there's no wind chill factor and you're getting radiation off the bench, suddenly it's warm in there, just like that. It's like somebody blew air in. But yeah, you could see the temperature is still 50 degrees. It didn't actually change. But because the wind chill factor isn't there anymore and the radiation is happening off the bench, nobody could tell. If you like this sort of thing, come on out to the forums at permies.com where we talk about rocket mass heaters, homesteading, and permaculture all the time.